the year 1964. The place, the Willows in the central Queensland gem fields. It's a harsh environment, but scratch the surface and you might just unearth something of rare beauty, a sapphire. The prospect of finding the elusive gem has attracted fossickers to the district since the 1800s. The Willows is unique among gemfield towns. Unlike the nearby towns of Anarchy, Sapphire and Rubyvale, the Willows is also a fauna reserve, prohibiting the use of mining machinery. And that's the way the locals like it. A place where amateurs have come for years, armed with nothing but a pick, a shovel and a sieve, if you can put up with the searing heat. It's no wonder that autumn and winter are the most popular seasons, with hundreds of fossickers hoping for a chance meeting with Lady Luck. And sometimes she smiles. Mick Stonebridge was one of the lucky ones. He was fortunate enough to find a rare green sapphire, which he never let out of his sight. The gem was sold after Mick died for $65,000. With these fields the only ones in the world that contain yellow and green sapphires, as well as the more common blue, it's no wonder that they attract buyers from all over the world, especially from Thailand in the 70s and 80s. The market of course is very much at the whim of the buyers, and on the central Queensland gem fields, the market is almost entirely in the hands of Bangkok-based merchants. The chairman of the local Shire Council claims the Thai buyers are taking some three and a half million dollars worth of sapphires out of the district each year robbing it of a local gem cutting industry. How many sapphires did you expect to buy from the miners here today, do you think? Um, he say it's not exactly, because sometimes if he's lucky, he buy plenty. It's nearly uh, 100,000 or sometimes less than that. Is he prepared to buy as many as the miners can give him? Pardon? Is he prepared to buy as many as the miners have to offer? Yes. Yeah. If you're prepared to buy so many sapphires, you must have a market for them. Where, where do you sell them all? We may cut it. Cut it at Bangkok or may, may sell it again to the wholesaler. Is there a good business in it for you? Yes. How much would you have bought with you? About 10,000. Could we see the money you have with you now? <laughs> A lot of money. How much would that be? I don't know what that Nearly a ten thousand. Peter Laws, who was the first gem cutter at the Willows in the 1950s, recalls seeing one particular Thai buyer flip open his case to reveal half a million dollars in cash. But when the gem price plummeted, the pace of life returned to normal. It's not surprising that the miners want cash in hand. All too often they have to struggle for months at a time with only the recurring dream of fabulous riches to keep them going. For the first five months when I was here, I, well, I would need my tucker. Well, I was really scratching. What chance would you give the weekenders who come out here uh, and just pitch a tent somewhere and start digging? Oh, it's, uh, well, you'd have to be more like, I think you'd be just as lucky in the casket as what you are with the, you know, making anything out of it. They generally go away with a piece of something somebody's thrown away, and I think that's good, you know. It's a one pub settlement, and the annual turnover is staggering, around $100,000. The drinking prowess of some of the locals is legendary. 
when the grog runs out, there's always the local specialty, scrub blush, metho and beetroot juice. Out here, even a bender has a bush flavour. It's called a rabbit run. parties go for it. Oh, you want to see them. You get hit on the head with a bottle or anything. It's just, it's just like that now still, is it? Still like that. Oh, not that bad. There's only been about three people shot in the last three years, I think. A bug near my camp. <laughs> Is that during a party or...? No. One was a suicide, another was a shooting. And... The shooting was, uh... Well, really a chap that deserved to be shot. Gemfield parties have been known to last six weeks, the whole time underground in the cramped damp of a mine shaft. This is the town which Bruce and Pat Gregory chose for their first pub. Did you have to change the ideas of the locals very much at all? Quite a bit, yes, quite a bit, yes. Took a little time. <laughs> what sort of problems were there? Um, really the disregard for other people. They were very noisy, uh, very untidy, rather rough, but slowly they, they realised that we all had to live here. is the melting pot for the unlikely blend of ingredients which go into anarchy, minor and day tripper. Well, of course, things aren't always as convivial as this at the Anarchy Hotel. In a hard-working, hard-drinking town, spirits can get very high. Sometimes, of course, they get out of hand too. When that happens, usually the patrons are barred for a while from the hotel. That's a fairly serious thing to happen when there's only one place of entertainment. But one poet, 18 months ago, took it a little too seriously. He was barred for a short time. He came back a few nights later. On the veranda behind me here, he left four sticks of jelly powder. The man responsible was convicted, but the Gregory's troubles didn't end there. Well, they gave us a rough time because um, a few of them that had been barred from the hotel sort of held it over us and, and the same thing could happen again. So it was rather difficult. And what did they actually do? Were there threats or what? Yeah, oh yes, we had lots of threats. Um, if we didn't have to make a noise or do what they wanted to do, we could have another bomb. Um, we had lots of practical jokes, um, firecrackers thrown on the veranda little parcels with a few sticking out of the end, this sort of thing, and it was very tiring. It took a long time to stop this sort of thing. We had to be pretty strong about it, and uh, we lost an awful lot of sleep with um, disturbances, but eventually we came to terms and it was all right. Anarchy has mellowed. To some, it's been soured by the additives of bulldozer and bus, but its colour is not likely to fade. So the way it was in the 60s is pretty much the way it is today. The Willows can't guarantee you'll strike it rich, but it's a place that will always give you a chance. All you have to do is scratch the surface. You might get lucky, you might even be inspired to poetry. Come to Willows, digger, make yourself content. Bring a pick and shovel, pitch yourself a tent. Here you'll find the sapphires, rocks of blazing blue. Black and green and yellow, other colours too. Jewels as big as marbles, even bigger still, gleam in every gully, glare on every hill. 
virgin miles of treasure, tons of gems in sight, shining like the planets and the stars at night. Come and get it, digger. Come and get your share. Bring out bags and buckets. Be a millionaire. Soon you will be famous, making headline news, taking 12-ounce yellows, leaving 8-ounce blues. Then you can retire, like we all do, dig, when our cash is little and our dreams are big.